Welcome back to another episode of the vlog. I'm so excited you're here. As you can see, my office is behind me, and that is because today we are starting the process of upgrading my home office. So when we first moved in, I told you guys that there were 999 projects that we were going to be taking on in the house to customize the house and turn it into our home. Our home offices have been functional. They've been working. But now that the dust has settled and we have re... Um, what is it? Re, uh, repossessed our time. Now we have more time to dedicate to actually jumping into these projects and getting some of them done. So today is going to be the first part of that. This will be a multi-part series in the office because there's tons to do. So today we're going to start by installing the feature wall. Um, on the far side of the office that is kind of setting the tone for inside of the office. In the offices, I've decided to go with picture frame molding because I wanted something a little bit more ornate, a little bit more decorative, and something that I could make a little bit more cozy. So in my office, as well as in Tim's office, we've got some picture frame molding that we're installing. And then from there, uh, we're gonna do some built-ins in here, built-in hack with some Ikea, with the Ikea bookshelves that I have, uh, with some floating shelves for plants and stuff like that, artwork, just to kind of make this space my studio. Um, my office is my workhorse, so I'm also trying to incorporate some ergonomics in here with desks that kind of move and go up and down because I do spend a lot of time in front of the computer and I want to be able to function, but I also want to make this place super, super pretty, super cozy, so that when I'm shooting my content, for my personal podcast and things of that nature, uh, it looks like and presents the way I want it to present. So I'm super excited about being in here. We finally got the paint. So once we're ready for paint, I'll show you guys the paint that we're going to be painting. But in today's video, we're going to go through how we install this picture frame molding um, because this wall has truly kicked my butt. <laughs> so if you're new to the channel, if you never met me before, my name is Kay Whitaker. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a content creator. And we have documented the journey of building our new construction home. And now that we're in it, we're going day by day to customize it and make it our own. So if you're into that type of thing, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, be sure to share it with a friend if you found it exciting. And then if you want to learn more about me and my family, be sure to connect with us over on the Instagram, the TikTok, all the places. Uh, we're there, SK Whitaker. All that good stuff will be left down in the description. Uh, if you've been here for a little while, welcome back, child. We're going into the project, so time is finally here. But that's enough rambling for today. Let's go ahead and hop into today's video. All right, y'all. So let me tell you what I done got my crazy self into. So initially I thought I was gonna come in, take the wall off starting from the bottom, do all my math and stuff, um, and then work my way to the top. But while I was sitting down here, 
measuring and doing all of this kind of stuff, I realized that I've got ceiling that vaults from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. I'll put in some B-roll so you can see it. And what I desire to happen, so this wall is gonna be broken up into three panel sections with three layers of panels. So what I desire to happen is for all three of those panel sections to be centered with each one of these peaks in the ceiling. And in order for me to do that, because I can't reach it from down here, I'm gonna have to get a ladder and level off a line on the wall so I can measure from those lines on the wall. So I'm literally gonna have to draw a line all the way down the wall and then measure my offsets from that line and start taping off so that I can make sure I have the accurate spacing and um, it is centered to each one of these peaks. So I gotta go get a ladder um, to get up there. And I'm actually gonna draw the lines on the wall first. I need to go get one of those extra long levels because this is the only level that I have, which I'm just gonna have to draw it in however many phases it takes me to get down to the bottom. So I'm actually gonna draw the lines on the walls first and then I'll come back um, and tape off. So let's go get the ladder and get these lines drawn. So I have started to frame out the wall and what I am doing is going in and getting precise measurements and taping it off on the wall to make sure I like the spacing, make sure I like what it looks like. So I know when I go get the wood, I can come in, draw the lines on the wood where I need to cut it and get the exact measurements that I need. So I went ahead and did the bottom real quick just to make sure I knew what I was doing. And if I've done my math correctly, the boxes on each side are the same width and the one in the middle is just gonna be what it is. So I'm gonna turn you around real quick and show you what I've done so far. And then we're gonna do some measurements on that box on the end, on the boxes on the end. And that's gonna be um, the litmus test as to whether or not I know math. And then from there, if the boxes on the bottom are right, then I can go up and do everything else. Tape it out, make sure it looks good, and then go get the wood. So let's take a look and do some measurements. So I've taped off the bottom boxes and I'm gonna pull you in a little bit closer because I don't think you could see with the actual camera. So basically what I did is I went all the way to, well, I went as far up as I could reach. My other ladder, I'm gonna have to get it out. I just brought this one out because it was a lighter weight, but I'm gonna have to get the other one out so I can reach the top when it's time to go up top. But basically what I did is I drew lines. You see that corner where the ceiling peaks? So I drew a line down each side of the wall with the pencil so that that could be my anchor. So like I created like many sections, section one, section two, section three. And then once I did that, I decided that I wanted three inches between the boxes and I wanted an inch and a half from each side. So I literally went on the wall with my level and drew X's at each one of those marks. Then I drew like short lines, short level lines, so I could drag the tape across those level lines to make sure they were straight. Then I connected them. So if I've done my math correctly, this box is the same width as that box. This box doesn't matter too much because it's doing its own thing. I just have to make sure it's spaced properly from my good eye. <laughs> it looks like I've done my thing, but I'm gonna put um, a ruler and a level on it 
just to make sure because I'm actually planning to just write the measurements out on the tape that I have here. I've already measured this one so that I can do some math real quick. Um, and from the math, I know how much wood I need to get one and then two, how I need to cut it on the 45s when I get home so that this can go quickly. This should be the longest part. Once I get the wood, if I know my measurements, I can just start cutting and then come in here and replace tape with wood, glue, nail, um, and go from there. So let's pray that we did this right. Um, and if so, then we're going to go up. I probably do the middle first because it's easier and then we'll go up the sides and then do some math and go buy some wood. So you're stuck in the middle, huh? I guess we're stuck in between. Life is a riddle, yeah. And I don't know what it means, nah. This is what it feels like. But you're not alone, cause I'm just like you. got the wall taped off all the way to the top uh, those corners oh my gosh it was a lot but I got it taped off so now I am going to measure off one side well all the sides I'm just gonna measure everything and write the measurements under it then do some calculations to see how much wood I need so I can go pick it up um, when I get summer from school. So I've been sweating. I'm gonna take a shower. The big kids are gonna be home soon. Um, that way, when I go to the store, I'm not all sweaty and stuff. So I'm pleased with the progress so far. Uh, I'll be back uh, when we start cutting it up and putting it on the wall. So let's talk molding really quickly before we go out and start cutting. So what we're installing on the wall, uh, the primary star of the show is this picture rail molding. So as you can see, the picture rail molding, the detail on the molding is kind of like a um, like you would do a picture frame, uh, but it's it's decorative for the wall. So in order to ensure that all of these lines match up, you got to cut at a perfect 45, which I think I've mastered cutting at the 45, but you just got to make sure that the cuts when you cut. So this 45 and this 45 are going in the di correct direction because it's really easy just to put the wood on your miter, cut 145, slide down, shift your miter, cut the order 45, but then it won't match with the next rail. So last night we went through those struggles um, and I did a couple of tests just to make sure I knew what I was doing. So this is what's on the wall so far. So now um, we're gonna finish off the bottom part first um, and then we'll start tackling the top. 
cool so let's uh show you how we do the measure or let me show you how i do the measurements because that's the process um and then we'll go out and start cutting
Now we just got to do up top. I'm a little nervous about the triangles, but I'm gonna follow the same process I've been following. What I've been doing is I've been getting the bottom anchored, leveled, cut the sides the same the same length, put them on the wall with some tape, make sure they're nice and level, then measure from top to top, cut, drop it in, and it's been level. It's been perfect. The triangle has me a little nervous because I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna follow the same process on the bottom and the sides. And then I'll worry about those two sides at the end. So I gotta run to Home Depot real quick, grab some more wood to finish, but I am really pleased with the way it looks so far. So let's run to the store and get some more supplies. All right, guys, so I'm sorry for the abrupt halt in the video. Um, trying to tape up those corners or trying to cut the wood for those corners has proven to be quite a bit more challenging than um, I initially realized. So what I understand about where we are right now in the project is these angles are not perfect 45s. So if you are not dealing with a perfectly square wall or rectangle wall, there's a couple of things that you're going to need in order to accomplish this. And I've been working for a couple of days trying to figure it out with a lot of frustration. So I decided that, you know what, we're going to pause, take some time to do some research so that we can finish it off because the rest of the wall looks absolutely amazing. And I don't want my frustrations to interfere with bringing out a perfect project. Yes, we're doing this ourselves, but we don't want it to look like a DIY. So I need to do a little bit more research. 
So <laughs> in some of my frustration, I reached over to my friend, uh, Brittany over at this Georgia clay. Y'all hear me talk about her a lot, but talking to Brittany and Matt, Matt informed me that I needed an angle finder. So I did go out, let me show you, and actually purchase an angle finder. But me being the quick, sh quick fire, quick shooter that I am, I didn't sit long enough to appropriately gauge how to use this and how to help it help me uh, find the angles. I found the angles, but I didn't go to the next step and say, okay, now how do we cut that on the miter? So what I've realized about the angles on the wall is that I am going to need to create something called a jig that will allow me to create steeper angles because I have been beating my head against the wall uh, trying to figure out how to line this stuff up because of the type of molding that it is. So I did find a YouTube video. I am going to attempt to make the jig, but we won't have it done in time enough for this video. So we're gonna pause here today and we're gonna call this phase one, almost done, phase 1.1 plus 1.2 <laughs> will come in next week. We will create the jig, get the triangles up with the picture frame molding, and I will be sure that I go through a step-by-step -step on how to cut it, how to find the angle, how to line it up, because I have scoured YouTube streets um, for triangle shapes on the picture frame molding. And if I get it right, I wanna be able to help somebody else that might have vaulted ceilings that actually has to do triangles instead of squares, uh, specifically figure out how to cut that. So. Huge shout out to Matt for doing the recommendation as far as for giving me the recommendation to Brittany and Matt for giving me the recommendation on an angle finder. Your girl has figured out how to use it, but I've got some additional work to do. This is geometry. So if math ain't your thing and math is not my thing, um, it's gonna take a little bit of work and I'm gonna try to explain it as best I can in next week's video. So we're gonna stop today um, because I've got a little bit more work to do to get the corners cut. And then next week when we come back, We'll talk through how to get the corners cut, show you how to get those installed. Then we're gonna do a bookcase hack with the Ikea bookshelves that I have um, to make it look like a built-in so that we can prep the wall and prep the space for paint and installing the floating shelves so I can have some plants and stuff in the room. Uh, and then really focusing on bringing the space all together after that with decorations and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching today. It's been fun. Um, I've really enjoyed the process, although I've been quite frustrated throughout a lot of this process. Um, I did realize that picture frame molding is a lot more detailed than just like your normal board and batten, but it's what I want. So it's willing, I'm willing to put the work in and I'm glad I'm starting in my office so that I can figure it out so that when I go to the next rooms, I have the formula. So thanks for watching today. If you haven't already subscribed and you enjoyed yourself today, be sure to do so and connect with me all over the internet. And we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back for next week's episode. Bye for now.